Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The energetic, the kingdom of God has suffered violent assault, but the energetic take it by force. Don't be too lazy to pray. All things are possible with God. John 14, 12, this is Jesus talking. I assure you most solemnly, that means, look, this is serious, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to my Father. And you know, I used to really wonder about that scripture. Well, how in the world could we do greater things than Jesus? I haven't raised any dead people. How can we do greater things than Jesus? I'll tell you how. Because when he left, he sent the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus was in a human body, and he could only be one place at one time doing one thing. But the Holy Spirit is in all of us, all over the earth. There are great things going on right now for the kingdom of God. All over the whole earth, there are great things going on right now for the kingdom of God. Anyone who believes that God can do powerful things through them, God will do powerful things through them. How many of you are beginning to see that having some kind of a lazy, weak, wimpy, pitiful attitude just hinders you from the life that God wants you to have? First thing you got to do is wake up. Get over passivity. Be aggressive. Stop waiting for somebody else to do everything that we need to do ourselves. Be people that are responsible. Verse 13, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name, that is, presenting all that I am, so that the Father might be glorified and extolled in and through the Son. Yes, he's saying it again, I will will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name, presenting all that I am. I love James 4 too. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible set me free in some areas many years ago. Simply says you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. If you would go and read James chapter 4, starting in verse 1, it says, what causes strife? What causes turmoil? Why are people unhappy? There are things they want, and they try to make them happen, and they can't make them happen. Then they see other people with them. They get jealous of those people. And the simple answer is, you have not because you ask not. If there's anything you want, you ask God for it. And you know this, that if he does not give it to you, then he has something better in mind and you're not smart enough to ask for it yet. Let's get over this attitude, well, God don't love me. He didn't give me what I want. He didn't hear my prayer. No, we have to trust God. God, I'm asking you for the best that I know, but I'm a flawed human being. If this is not what you want for me, now, if it's in the Bible, then we know God wants it for us. But there's a lot of other things that are not in there that we could get a little off on. Our motives can be impure. Our timing can be wrong. And so we need to say, God, this is what I would like to have. And if it's right for me, I know that you will give it to me. Do you hear me? If you ask for something and it is right for you, God will give it to you. And if he doesn't, it's because it's either the wrong time or something he needs to you do in you first before he brings it into your life, or he's got something better in mind for you, and you just need to hang on and wait and see what God does. Yes. Oh, how wonderful it is to trust God. Oh, my gosh. Lord, have mercy what burdens it lifts off of us to just be able to give it to God in prayer and going about our business. In James 5, 16, and actually I want to start in James 5, 13. Now, see, I'm excited about this because I know that more people are going to be praying more often after they hear this. 
hopefully forever, but at least for a little while, and then I'll come around and preach it again in another way, or somebody else will. And God will keep us stirred up and encouraged. James 5.13, is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? He should pray. <laughs> is anyone glad at heart? He should sing praise to God. Is anyone sick? He should call in the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they will pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. And the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, you know, in my conferences, almost in every session from the platform up here, I pray different things over the congregation. And there's so much power released when we pray like that. And I do it because I believe in the power of prayer. And I can't come and talk to each one of you individually and hear your need, but God knows your need. And last night I prayed that the sick would be healed. And I pray it based on this scripture, that we can pray a simple prayer of faith and the sick will be healed. Now, obviously, you need to cooperate with the prayer. That's why I try to get people to say, after I pray for them, don't go around and talk about how bad you feel all the time. Say, the healing power of God is working in me right now. What do you think would happen with all your sickness and diseases if about 10 times a day you stopped and said, the healing power of God is working in me right now? Simple, try it. Go ahead, I, I dare you, just try it. The healing power of God is working in me right now. I mean, that's got to be better than, I'm so sick, I feel so bad, I've had this so long, I don't know if I'll ever get well. Hallelujah. All right. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you might be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Now, are you ready for this? The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Prayer is a violent force in the spirit realm that interrupts Satan's plan. And you need to see it like that. <laughs> when you pray and the devil whispers, this isn't doing any good. Look at the mess you got. Surely you don't think saying four words is going to fix it. Then you say, devil, I have just interrupted your plan and you just don't like it. You say, well, that maybe works for you, Joyce. You know, maybe it works for platform people or TV people or, you know, pastor people. No, ordinary people. You say, well, wait a minute. It said when a righteous man prays. That doesn't mean a man who's perfect in all of his ways. That means somebody who knows who he is in Christ. And just to make his point, God gives us a great example in the Word. Elijah was a human being with a nature just like we have, with feelings, affections, and a constitution just like ours. He had good days, he had bad days, he had strong days, he had weak days. On one day, he was so full of faith that he called down fire from heaven, and he personally killed 450 Baal prophets cut them in pieces, that had to be a big job. <laughs> but the next day, everybody say the next day. The next day. The next day, he was threatened by Jezebel. I'm going to kill you for killing my prophets. And he got so, he was frightened. He ran out into the wilderness. He got depressed. He sat down under a tree and said, God, if this is the way you're going to treat me, then just kill me. <laughs> so from being a mighty fire calling down, devil slaying prophet one day 
to being a depressed, suicidal mess the next day. Why would God bring this example up? He said, Elijah, who was a man that had a constitution just like ours, affections just like ours. You know, you can have a rotten day and you can shake yourself loose and say, I'm going to come boldly before the throne. Hey, if you're only going to pray when you have perfect days, there ain't going to be much praying going on. Amen. I love Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. We have a high priest who understands our weaknesses and our infirmities because he's been tempted in all points just like we have yet without sinning. Therefore, let us come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace that we might receive the help that we need in plenty of time to meet our need. We go boldly to the throne because of faith, not because of our good works. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter what has come against us, no matter how desperate our situation is, when we pray, we make an opening for God to work and Satan's plan is interrupted. Acts chapter seven, eight and nine. Well, we're just going to read verse 9. And the patriarchs, Jacob's sons, boiling with envy and hatred and anger, sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt. But God... There it is, the interruption. And you can find that same phrase in several places in the Bible. But God was with him. Doesn't matter who's against you if God's with you, if God's for you, if God's on your side. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, you've got what you need today to live in victory. You've already got the victory. You've already got the power. All you need to do is believe it and release it and speak it and pray it. And do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you wear the devil out. Come on, we're soldiers in the army of God. We got to fight the good fight of faith. Verse 10, and delivered him from all of his distressing afflictions and won him goodwill and favor and wisdom and understanding in the sight of Pharaoh who made him governor over Egypt and all of his house. That's not too bad from the pit to the palace. Some of you feel like you're in the pit right now, but I want to tell you, there's a place waiting for you in the palace. But now I have to be honest and tell you this. Not if you sit around and complain all the time. Not if you spend your days feeling sorry for yourself. Being jealous of everybody else who doesn't have your problems and still full of hatred and anger toward everybody who ever hurt you. Please understand I say it in love, but you'll stay in the pit if that's what you do. You can be saved and live in a pit. But if we want the life that Jesus died to give us, then so to speak, we need to play by God's rules. <laughs> For example, <laughs> when we think about prayer, do you know that faith works only by love? So God gives us the faith and he teaches us to walk in love. Galatians 5, 6, faith works is activated and energized by love. So no matter how much faith I have, if I don't have a healthy love walk, my faith is not going to work. Come on, who are you mad at? Who are you jealous of? Who could you help, but you've been too selfish to do it? Uh-oh, okay, I'll, I'll rewind and take that one back. <laughs> Every time you do something for somebody, you are helping yourself more than you can possibly imagine. The best way in the world to stay powerful and to have power and be violent against the enemy is to be a blessing to as many people as you can, as often as you can, as long as you can. Yeah. 
Now, I know you probably know these scriptures, but nonetheless, we forget things. So let's look at Mark 11. I mean, isn't this stuff exciting? Isn't it so exciting? Hey, isn't this better than watching the news? Oh, my gosh. You say, well, I want to know what's going on. I don't. This is what I want to know. This tells me what's going to go on. And I'm not saying to stick your head in the, hand, you know, in the pit and be stupid, but I just figure if it's important enough, Dave will tell me. Mark 11, 22, and Jesus replying said to them, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Talk about power. Uh-oh. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. See, when you ask for something, you, you got to believe it's on its way before you see it. And every time the enemy says that didn't do any good, you say, it's coming. It's coming. It's on its way. It's coming. And... Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, anything against anyone, anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop, leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may forgive you your sins and let them go. How many of you want your prayers to work? I mean, seriously. Well, then you're just going to have to forgive everybody you're mad at. Even if it's unfair, if it's unjust, if they didn't treat you right, if it's their fault, you still forgive them, leave it, let it go. That puts them in God's hands. Either you can try to handle people or you can give them over to God. And you pray for them. You know, most of the time when people hurt you, it's done in ignorance. Much of the time it's done out of their own pain and their own hurt. I don't believe that there's very many people who get up every day purposely planning to see how many people they can hurt. I just think there's a lot of people out there that are full of a lot of pain. A lot of hurts, a lot of wounds, a lot of emptiness, a lot of darkness. I mean, how are you? Even on, I know how I am even on a day when I'm extremely tired. I can't imagine what people are going through who don't know Christ at all. What would it be like to only know darkness? We need to pray for those people. One of the most important prayers that Jesus possibly ever prayed was one of the shortest. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Hanging on the cross, prayed for his crucifiers. When, when Stephen was being stoned, he prayed for God to forgive them. Let's stop worrying so much about what people are doing to us and be a little more concerned about what they're doing to themselves when they do it to us. You're God's child. It's a dangerous thing for somebody to hurt you and take advantage of you. <laughs> All things work together for good. To those who keep on praying and love God and want His will. Boy, what an awesome scripture. How much peace can that scripture bring you? All things work together for good. All things. All things. You know, as stupid as it sounds, the sexual abuse in my childhood has worked out for my good. And for your good, by the way. Do you hear me? 
That doesn't mean that it is good. That doesn't mean that what happened is good. That doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt you. But as you continue to pray, God can work it out for good. And that's the great privilege of being a believer, that no matter what the devil throws against you, God can take it and work it out for your good. What did Joseph say? What you meant for my harm, God intended for my good. Boy, how refreshing it is, even in the midst of your pain today, to be able down deep inside to say, God, this hurts so bad, I don't think I can stand it. But I choose to believe today that you can take this thing and work it out for my good. I believe there's some people that need to pray that even right now. I believe that you can take this thing and work it out. See, it doesn't do you any good just to listen to me try to cheer you up. It has to be something that gets in your heart and you choose to believe that. I believe that God can work this out for my good. Don't ever give up on God when you have a problem. Here's the way you pray your way, your way through the day. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the Amplified Bible says something I want to talk about in just a minute. It says definite request. I think sometimes we need to take the time to be a little more definite and focused about what we're praying and not just always that bless me Lord bless Joe bless John you know let's just take a little more time and let God show us what Joe and John need and even what we need ourselves now I mean that's not bad God I pray that you'd bless people I you know I love to bless people but when we go when you go to a store to buy something you don't say, I mean, if there's five colors of something and seven sizes, you don't just say, I'll take one of those on that table. You want a certain color, you want a certain size. If it's got trim on the pockets that you like, you want a certain trim, you're definite about what you want. And so when we go to God, we need to be definite about what we want. I can tell that's kind of like a new thought for a lot of you. And yes, there's a place to just say, God, your will be done, but... Let's just make sure that we're taking enough time in prayer to be sincere about it and not just throwing a few loose words up. Prayer is being violent. The prayer does not need to be violent, but the impact of simple prayer is violent. Is anybody understanding that? Yeah. Behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And I've given you physical and mental ability over all the power the enemy possesses. And nothing shall by any means harm you. Amen? I want us to look at this just in closing today. First Chronicles, we're going to start in verse 9. First Chronicles 4.9. Jabez was honorable above his brothers, but his mother had named him Jabez, which meant sorrow maker, because she bore him in pain. How would you like that to be your name? <laughs> you sorrowful guy, you. Every time somebody calls you sorrow maker, sorrow maker, you're making everybody miserable everywhere you go. But he had a vision for his life. This is about overcoming. <laughs> Jabez cried to the Lord of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my borders and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from evil so it might not hurt me. And God granted his request. Yeah. You know what? Here's the bottom line. If you're bold enough to ask, you're just liable to get it. And I always say I'd rather ask for a lot and get half of it than to ask for nothing and get all of it. So I suggest that we realize that even though there's a lot of violent things going on in the earth today, that we have the power to turn things around because God is on our side. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the wicked one. 
They're under his feet. They're under our feet. We've got all the power that we need. All we need to do is release it. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. It's because it's that small. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future change our situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give. And we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek 
Door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl shop. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.